This is a small project studio set up for mixing, music production, and recording of one or two instruments at a time. There is a 61 key controller keyboard, two 21 inch video monitors, and speaker monitors on either side of the desk. Here we see a vintage 8 channel Soundcraft mixer used for monitoring and preamps on top of a rack full of equipment, including a Digizyne 002 rack used as the main audio interface. Notice how beyond the rack there is considerable space for access, acoustic paneling, and the subwoofer seen below. Returning back to the main desk, we can see the stereo speaker monitors on either side. These NHT Pro A10s, which are a discontinued model, are both positioned on custom-made metal stands designed for decoupling the sound from the floor. Looking back at the desk again, we can see the 61 key M-Audio Radium keyboard. Back at the rack, we can see a Neve 5012 mic preamp, a DBX162 compressor, and a Sansamp PSA-1. As we turn around from the mix position, we notice many things on the walls, including acoustic treatment, cables, and guitars. Here we have a nice little recording area, accessible to the engineer or an additional musician. And just beyond that is the isolation booth. This is another great spot for recording in the studio. The difference here is that the acoustics are very dead and controlled. The current configuration is set up for a vocal or voiceover, but can be changed to accommodate many other recording scenarios. Here we can see the mic panel in the isolation booth. There are six connections. One through five are for mic inputs, and six connects to the headphones. This booth was built to be dead acoustically by building permeable acoustic walls positioned away from the real walls of the closet. The space between is filled with absorptive insulation material. The result is that low frequencies pass through and are trapped. As we move out of the closet, we see the rest of the room, including the entry door, more guitars on the walls, and of course, a couch. Here we have acoustic treatment in the reflection-free zone, another guitar, and we're back to the mix position. Now we can travel behind the mixer and the rack to see how some of this studio is connected. Notice the gray cable connected to the headphone out on the mixer. That goes directly to channel six on both mic panels. And of course, here we see the usual mess of cables located behind any equipment rack. But where do all those cables go? Let's follow the cables and find out. Now we've reached the computer, the heart of the studio. This computer is located behind the wall of the studio in order to avoid the noise of fans and spinning hard drives. Here we can see the path of the cables that we just traveled along. The orange cable is power, the blue is audio snake, and the black cables are computer cables. The white box on the other side of the computer is a UPS, or uninterruptible power supply, or basically a battery backup. If we now look at the blue cable, or the audio snake, we will notice that it is located away from the power and computer cables. At this point, the audio snake goes back into the wall to connect to the mic panel located at the back of the studio. The connections are daisy-chained back out of the wall and finally to the mic panel in the isolation booth. We hope that you enjoyed this tour and will join us in the future for more information about audio recording and music production at thedawstudio.com.